Well, hello again, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to Besiege, a game by Spiderling Games. So, basically, what this game is, is building a besiege weapon, or a siege weapon, or, well, besieging a castle with a siege weapon, thus besiege. Anyway, it's time to get into it. Let's get started. Uh, when the game is released, it seems like it'll be a little bit like Little Big Planet in terms of there'll be different worlds, different continents here, as you can see. And it appears to me that there's a sandbox mode, which we can get into a little bit later, and a moon, which is under construction. Now, my thought will be that there will probably more than likely be a storyline mode to the game, which you can see each little continent possibly being a part of the story, where the difficulty increases, such as like Castle Crusher or something like that and then eventually user created levels can take place on the moon of course that's my speculation or at least my hope as well as the sandbox world being able to be modified but anyway let's get right into it I've already designed some really neat looking uh, worlds or um, weapons to destroy this world with and we'll start here at uh, an area known as Ypsilon I believe is the uh, name of the world yes Ypsilon ruled by Queen Winrith all right, so this is an island. You can see a little pirate ship down here. It kind of looks like a Viking ship anyway. Uh, you can scroll all the way around the map and get a different look at stuff. And I've already conquered the entire island, so it's uh, going to be really cool to show you some of my greatest and latest designs and weapons. So uh, anyway, in keeping with the theme of, uh, of I guess, the Vikings, I've kind of named everything in honor of Strombi with everything being hilariously Bork. So uh, I will show you some of that in a moment. So your objectives through each level is pretty simple. It's either destroy a building or destroy a castle or destroy a wall and then become a little bit more complicated such as transport things from A to B. Now that sounds a little boring and or very simple and as you can see the layout of the game is very simple as well. There's a white background with a tilt shift art style going on. Here we see a guy next to a, a little farmhouse with some sheep in it and uh, we basically have to destroy this house. Now there's many different ways we can do that, especially with our weapons down here under weaponry. We can smash it with a spike ball, we can cut through it with a metal blade or a circular saw, we can stab it with a spike, shoot it with a cannon or flamethrowers, blow it up with bombs and or use holders to throw those things like a, fel a flaming ball and a catapult. This game reminds me a lot of a medieval battle bots. Now that would be one game mode that I'd really like to see. Let's go right into loading this uh, one here I deleted because I just renamed it, but as you can see, you can actually have aircraft in the game. I have catapults and some massive weapons, and we'll show off some of those later, as well as some that didn't work at all, and they're kind of just experimental goofs uh, that I kind of came up with. But anyway, I will uh, first show you exactly how a catapult works, and uh, as that's kind of the most fun to play with, and then we'll design a sh uh, some sort of a craft or, or a weapon uh, in a few minutes. So uh, we also have the ability to fly, as I said. There's flying box and uh, blocks and aerodynamic propellers, as well as wings and armor to help keep you alive against enemy weaponry, which is going to be most threatening as arrows at this uh, time, uh, as this game is available on their website and will soon be available on Steam. Keep in mind, some of my friends were able to watch me play it on Steam by adding it to my library as a non-Steam game, and then they were able to watch as well. So if you ever want to show off a game that you're saying to your friends, hey, you must get this game, that would be the best thing to do. So anyway, we can go into ba some basic blocks, but I'm going to show you one of the coolest things I've designed, which is the Borka Bolt. All right, let's go ahead and double click on that, or yep, load that in. So as you can see, the wheels here will rotate forward, as you can see the little arrows there pointing to it, and you can put little, um, with the click of a mouse, you can put little pieces on and uh, add anything you want. And of course, when those wheels rotate forward, those uh, wooden pieces would rotate as well, so that would be bad. You can delete things by basically pointing at it with the arrow key and hitting X. And of course, if you accidentally deleted something that you didn't mean to, you can always back up even after you've tested the weapon out. So you can always be experimenting, and they've made it very easy to do so. Similar to Little Big Planet, there's a key mapper which allows you to use pistons and and uh, and hinges and springs and uh, all sorts of other things uh, under the powered tab, like for instance steering and spinning blocks, for example, and even ability to grab things where you can control them independently. For example, if you wanted, uh, if you clicked on the key mapper. You can actually have your wheels turn independently, which I believe I've chosen here. So you can see that the wheels in the front will turn right when I press left and left when I, or 
will turn right when I press left, and it's the reverse in the rear. So if we hit space, which lets us go into uh, test mode, which by the way, you can speed down time to a very slow, you can actually zero, it. like there's 1%, you can actually see it drop to the ground ever so slowly as we speed it up, because uh, I didn't build it necessarily on the ground. You can see the uh, vehicle actually go through some weight stress from gravity, and you'll see it level out here in just a moment, which makes it very, very cool for editing things if you want some sort of a centered frame, um, uh, a center of mass, if you will. I have armor underneath the uh, under underneath the Borka Pult there, which is more meant, and with armor on the back, more meant to help even it out. Though these weapons at this point have kind of the durability of one fire before they kind of fall apart. So anyway, let's go into up to 100 and something percent mode, and you can see that with left and right, the wheels turn left and right, and it helps the steering quite a bit. Uh, a weapon like this doesn't turn very easy with that kind of armor and such, but it does give you the ability to um, to try to reposition the weapon if you if you can. Though of course it's not perfect, and uh, the, probably the best thing to do would just be to spin around at this point. But it, it leaves a lot to the imagination, not to mention tires can actually rip off pieces and cut them off too and fall off if you're not careful with your designs and or careful with your driving. So here we're kind of SOL, stuck in the water. We can kind of drive around a little bit and you can see our piece is still working even though they're detached. But if ever you screw up, just hit that spacebar button and you're right back on track. So let's go ahead and hit L, which is the uh, button to launch this bomb. So we'll press L to tighten these springs and that will send this lever forward which is connected via this hinge here to the front of the Borka Pult. And of course these metal um, braces here are for stability which you can build almost an unlimited number of them which makes this game astounding. Uh, not only in the art style which I absolutely love the minimalist aspect of it. It really focuses all around here's your weapon and there's your target and good luck. So anyway, let's see what kind of damage we can do here. I'm going to press L for a quick second just to give it a short throw. And very well done. We killed the guy, and I think the sheep is still alive, so that's okay. Zone conquered here then on the Isle of Epsilon. going to go ahead and show off some more stuff then by hitting spacebar. Not only can you uh, throw bombs with a catapult, but you can also drop bombs with a bomber. Here we have the air bork, which uh, is going to be used here. I actually failed to load that one, so let me get that. There we go. Now, flying aircraft is a little more difficult, so we're going to slow things down a bit, and I'm going to explain exactly how this works, as it's going to be a, a lot more complicated than any ground vehicle. So my thought behind this vehicle was just basically balancing a center of mass, and as you can see, it's almost shaped like a kite, ironically enough being a air vehicle. Each one of these rotating, uh, looks almost like a, a screwed up umbrella, helps to keep the vehicle in the air. And as you can see, with each one of these vehicles, you can actually adjust the flying speed and also the button that controls whether or not they go up or down. On these, you can see I gave a hot key of Q, and in the rear, I gave the hot key of up, uh, hot key rather, of up rather than Q. So that way, when I press up, when the heli when this thing is flying, it will tip the back end up a little bit and make it go forward. And then, of course, these uh, two uh, bomb holders are held in place by these um, rotating pieces or these steering columns, which are controlled by the buttons of E and F, which means that I can drop bombs either in front of the aircraft or behind the aircraft if we... Uh, fly past the target. So let's go ahead and speed it on down to five, which it's at, and let's go ahead and give it a test. Uh, we're going to go ahead and see if we can hold up in the air. I'm now hitting Q to try to get the aircraft to kind of level out a little bit. You can see the bombs moving a little bit here. Uh, we're going to start flying backwards until I press up. I'm going to let go of Q briefly to let the tail end get back up, and you can actually see the wood bending as the stresses of the vehicle change. There's actually no real view to see that at all. Uh, you can't see it as you would in some sort of bridge building game, but you can definitely see that we've now put the uh, back end up in the air. We're actually moving forward now towards that target. We're going to gain a little bit of altitude as we pass over the barn, and of course the ideal situation for this sort of bomber helicopter uh, hybrid is to fly over it and not be damaged at all, though the possibility of that is probably quite low. I'm going to go ahead and hold F and start tipping those bomb baskets forward and we can go ahead and let go of the uh, up now as we don't need to have such forward momentum and these bombs should drop um, it looks like they're gonna drop a little late we could have dropped them behind us but the damage should be done 
you're going to see some absolutely beautiful explosions here in just a second. Two bombs are away. We could light the trees on fire. That fire then could eventually lead towards the little hut there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and stop the drop, the bop, the, the bop, the bomb dropping uh, as those canisters are in place now. No need to keep pushing those forward. Look at that absolutely beautiful explosion. Let's go ahead and stop that right there. Look at that. I mean, this game, just amazing. Look at look at that. You can actually just use WASD to get away from the vehicle and just check out the explosion itself. I mean, look at this guy. He's, he's pissed. He's like, God damn it. <laughs> look at that. Isn't that astounding? I mean, that's what this game is capable of. And uh, for being such a basic version, I hope they keep it this simple. I mean, that's astounding. Now, I don't know if our bombs would have destroyed that or not, so we're going to go ahead and give that another try. Of course, it probably would have burned eventually, but that's not what you want to see. You want to see bombs absolutely wreck that house right away. So let's go ahead and we're in test mode right now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get the uh, thing moving here a little bit at 2%. We'll speed it up, speed it up to about 25% so you can kind of see it move in a little bit more... Um, in a little bit more of uh, accuracy and if you ever get the camera wild there's a reset camera button we're probably gonna fly away from the target a little bit more than intended but you can always go on your traditional suicide run if you don't know what you're doing anyway and just basically go upside down and do whatever you want and basically light on fire if you wanted to So let's give that one more try as uh, I had to move my hand off the, uh, off the um, thing there to speed up uh, to 25 percent so we've got our ass end up in the air, and there goes the bombs, and this is the perfect drop for the air bork. In fact, they can go right in with it, why not? And you can see that our own vehicle, even if it gets close to fire, can catch fire as well, which is exactly why those armor pieces are so important for resistance to fire and or damage like that. Aircraft are not easy to pilot, and uh, definitely uh, showing off some skills there by just basically flying forward and dropping some bombs. But the skill doesn't come in how you work the vehicle. It's all about the pre-design move on to the next zone then and I'll show you guys what the next uh, target of opportunity is so if you originally built a weapon on the ground that was just for ramming we've now got a little bit of a windmill up on a uh, some sort of a hill here now of course I'm pretty sure that the aircraft could destroy this let's try something else out from our repertoire now we've got uh, many different vehicles here I'm pretty sure you all want to see the Bork Buster 9000 X but let's start with the Bork Cannon X3 X6 which stands for three uh, can three different weapons racks of six cannons total a little complicated but basically what it is is I can fire each one of these cannon cannons independently so I can fire two four and six thus you know three times well you'll you'll see in just a moment now the cool thing about this weapon is it's uh, basically a it's basically about as tank as it gets in the game you can move forward you can move left and right it's not as easy to you know it's not as easy to turn but neither is a tank either this is a siege weapon here we're not talking about a Ferrari um, now of course if uh, we're a little bit off the target or if we somehow miss let's say we uh, accidentally shoot our first two cannons miss we can always elevate our cannons as well by pressing T or Y to up uh, raise and lower our cannons at least that's how we have it uh, programmed here we can even push some chickens out of the way they're getting chickling or uh, they're getting our way there we go alright so we can fire up high and see if we can hit anything from there with no success there and we could also just move back and try to hit our target by just hitting space and uh, go, ahead, go ahead and just try from three too low two not high enough and of course elevation there you go so we tip, tipped our cannons up just a little bit the game is generous enough to start you right in front of the target too which means positioning doesn't have to be exact so that's really nice as well let's move on to the next zone now not only in this game are you going to be destroying targets but you're also going to have to be navigating through very dangerous areas now if you don't recognize these things on the ground from before they are bombs and thus they're like a, it's basically a minefield an old former battlefield and you definitely want to stay away from those mines so what exactly would be the best thing to get through here well there's a vehicle designed just for traversing territory like that we've got the Borkmobile that's right it's uh, lightly armored well more heavily than most and it has a lot of good mobility to it so we can easily zip around the battlefield and crush sheep it's almost got a zero turning radius too pretty close anyway or at least as close as I'd hope it would be and the sheep seem to be quite attracted to our vehicles so they're just asking for trouble but anyway with uh, a little bit of steering you can make your way through the battlefield no problem oh I thought we could just plow right over that damn well, we'll have to go around, and that's quite all right. Our target to get to is right up there, so all we have to do is maneuver, 
keep in mind these sheep can walk right into these bombs and set them off so sometimes they're not your best friend if you get a little too close to them but that's the success on that let's move on to the next zone and we've got a wall in front of us a perimeter wall to be exact so we've got to not only destroy the wall, but there's also a little house and a windmill in the back there that you can see. Now, of course, we could just drive around this wall, no problem, and destroy those two things, but it's much cooler to go right through the wall. So we could use the air bork to bomb it. We could use the borka bolt to cut through it, or we could probably use the bork buster 9000X. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. Oh yes. So not only does this shoot one bomb, but it actually is a catapult that shoots three different types of bombs, or well, I should say at least three different bombs in one shot. There's also a cannon, or a rather piston-driven saws in the front, and spikes all around the cor all around the sides. So no, nothing's going to sneak around the corners for us. A lot of weight in the back to hold this thing down, and we're going to speed it down to about 10%. You can actually see this thing drop now to the bottom as it's kind of tilted up. Now, one thing that these archers can do that we can't do is they can actually fire bow and arrows at our bombs, and they can actually set them off in midair. So let's go ahead and just show you exactly what uh, what uh, what arrows can do against bombs. Not good for us. So would the Borka bolt still would the uh, rather the Borkbuster 9000X be a good shot here? Absolutely. All you have to do is just time it right, and it's all about the timing. Like I said, see, a little too late it exploded on top, a little too late, and they hit it with their uh, arrows, so it's all about the timing. You want to make sure it's laying down, then you want to hit it, something like that. There you go. So again, the nice thing about this is you can try it time and time again. We uh, will not be able to pass on because we did not destroy that, uh, that windmill there, but you can see a lot of bodies flying out of the sky. Damn, was that a heavy hitter, that Borka Bolt, or the uh, Bork Buster 9000X, inspired by the Borka Bolt, I should say. But the nice thing is here, even though we are not able to get over to that uh, windmill, there is a way to set it on fire. It's just about trial and error, so all you really have to do is just kind of keep doing that. And <laughs> it's so cool how you can kind of just keep resetting just to see what different outcome happens each time that you play. So now you can see this time the different outcome was that the windmill actually started on fire because the bomb landed a little bit differently. The wall's been crushed, the tower's been destroyed, it's raining men, hallelujah, it is raining men, unfortunately for the enemy for the queen at least, and that windmill is about to burn up. Sorry, Netherlanders. All right, so a zone conquered. Let's move on to the next zone. Again, this is just the initial tutorial uh, area that's available in the game. Now, here's the queen's fodder. We've, we're surrounded by troops. We are outnumbered and possibly outgunned. We uh, have some mines everywhere. What are they gonna do against us? I don't know, let's give it, let's give it a shot with the uh, Borkbuster 9000. Looks like they just shoot them right out of the air. And they actually lit our uh, catapult on fire, and a lot of these guys are actually running into the fire. A lot of these guys on fire. Look at all the deaths happening. Oh my gosh. Bars just filling up. We still have um, troops in the in the back to kill. Look at the battlefield. Absolutely amazing. Look at how it looks. Just look at that. So we've got some... The tilt shift, by the way, is not perfect. You know, it kind of makes you go blind if you're... Like, do not adjust your screens. That's You're seeing that as, exactly as it should be. Uh, but you kind of have to get certain angles on things. So the tilt shift is nice, but sometimes is a pain in the ass if you're trying to get in close and see exactly what you're shooting at. So maybe that's not the best weapon. We could try an, something else. In fact, the Borka Bolt might be a little better as it's got a basic ramming, uh, battering ram on the front. Or we could try the Bork Tyson to knock the enemy out. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. What this is, is of course, uh, if, you, if you can't tell just by looking at it, it's two spike balls on top of a spinning uh, block that is mounted on a chassis with wheels. Pretty simple, pretty cool. Go ahead and let the enemy come at us, bro. Now keep in mind, every time those arrows hit us, we are taking some damage, especially in the exposed wood sections, and you can see it right there. One of our wheels just fell off, possibly due to the tension of the... Uh, yeah, see, look at that. The, uh, the arms of the uh, Bork Tyson actually fell off. But that doesn't mean we're disabled. We can still plow through these guys and at least try to take them down, but unfortunately too much damage. So we have to be a little bit more quick with this, and uh, we're going to actually... Now it is very difficult to steer this kind of a weapon because we've got uh, such a... This apparatus is actually spinning, which makes turning a little difficult. It's like a helicopter in terms of a helicopter usually has a tail rotor that produces a lift or propulsion in, in the opposite direction in which it's set up. And you can see we've actually lost both of our spike balls now from possibly the arrows and or just the durability of the weapon just kind of expiring. But you can see we're kind of trying to 
crush these guys, and if they get close enough, we can roll forward. The um, the swordsmen here, pikemen, cannot really attack. They're kind of just more of uh, targets to destroy. But look at that. You can see our weapon's got a mind of its own now. It's doing karate kicks. Look at that. It's actually still killing people with the with the craziness of the weapon. That's about it. So that's about all that can do. Maybe we could just go at him with a Borkmobile with some sort of armor. Of course, you can always test everything as much as you want. Let's just try to plow right through them and see what happens. Let's just go right for it, especially those archers. We've got to get to them before they get to cause too much damage to our armor. Cut right through there. Lost our back tires with too hard of a turn. Those Oh, man, those guys went right through that uh, minefield there. Running over guys right now with our tires. Oh, we're on fire. We are on fire. Oh, man, hopefully everyone gets finished off there. Hey, look at that. Even though we lost our weapon and there's still some people left, that is the end of that. Look at the battlefield. Absolutely beautiful. Really cool. Really cool. A couple of guys left there. So, All right, let's move on to the next zone. And here we've got a little bit of a tricky one. We have to steal and deliver two iron ore deposits, which means if you were playing with a catapult this entire time, this is where you have to kind of change up your thoughts. You have to reach and move things a little bit, and we have something specially designed just for that. We've got our Bork Lift. The Bork Lift is a uh, is a, of a pretty cool design, kind of an accidental design. It looks kind of like uh, one of those cranes at the docks, as you can see here. Uh, the Bork Lift can not only uh, reach down towards uh, whatever it's trying to pick up, but it can also raise itself up uh, in order to try to. Uh, it can actually uh, twerk a little bit there, twerk it, baby, and a wheel fell off. Look at that. <laughs> So it's, nothing is ever perfect in this game, and in fact, you could do this a hundred times in one test and never have a wheel fall off, and the first time on the next test, it'll happen. So let's go ahead and try to easily steal and deliver those two pieces of, um, of iron ore there for our war efforts. We're going to first spin over to this one, and we can probably just knock it off the ledge a little bit. We probably don't have to pick it up, I, I don't think. We can if we need to, though. Uh, we can get that grabber, which has got the spikes at the end of it, and just stab it right into it. And uh, let's see if we can do that now. That was the wrong button. There you go. We can Now, these are very heavy, so we kind of have to scoot them over there. And, uh, again, there should be maybe rubber tires or something in the future for more stability or something like that. But with the press of V, we can detach from that, and it's going to get stuck. So we're going to actually uh, do this to kind of back away from it. There we are. And with the second iron ore on the move, hopefully we can get it before it rolls too far. Where are you going there, iron ore? This thing's got a great turning radius, too, which really helps to grab these uh, iron ore deposits. And we'll turn back the other way. And pretty cool. So it's really neat that there's not just destruction in the game. Anyone can just destroy. That's, that's easy enough. But building, creating, and moving, that's something very difficult. Now, this is an interesting level. Look at this. All we have to destroy, we just have to destroy that little uh, Viking ruin, right? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it can fire back. Oh, damn you. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you down. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna stab you. Oh, he lit me on fire. Oh, that little. Oh. oh. No matter. It's a good time for the aircraft again to get a little close. We can, of course, destroy this with the Borka Bolt, no problem, but I think it's time we try out our uh, air Bork again. So let's go ahead and try this. Now we'll do it in uh, normal mode, as it's a little easier to fly, actually, at normal speed. No problem there. We destroyed our weapon, of course, but we've accomplished the objective, so no problems there. Though I must say, it's much more—it's much more difficult to actually go through it without destroying your aircraft. All right, so use explosives to destroy 40% of the castle. Again, we can just plow right through this with the uh, with the aircraft. I'm really enjoying the aircraft because it adds a special challenge. Let's try to tip the bombs behind us this time and get real elevated here and have some sort of high-level HE-111 going on. Uh, I don't know if I'm—I'm I'm no, I'm no German bomber, that's for sure. Let's try that. How did that work? Horribly. <laughs> All right, let's just go right in. We'll uh, we'll try to do it uh, kamikaze style. There you are. Good. Zone conquered there, and you see the castle's destroyed. Only bombs can destroy these types of structures as well, so don't think that you're going to cut through it or jab through it or do anything other than blow it up with bombs. So really cool. We cut through that no problem. Next zone is up. We've got the uh, Midlands Encampment. Oh, we've got some cannons against us now. Looks like some pikemen. Uh, bow and arrow, uh, we've got some archers, I guess, bow and arrow, cannon, and, oh wait, two cannons there, one up on the hill, and also destroying the encampment. So, let's try to go in for a high altitude bombing run again, I guess mid 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 to high level altitude bombing run, only uh, destroying the tents there. 
and we're on fire now. I don't know if these guys are going to walk over to us, but this seems like a job for something a little different. Of course, the Borkbuster 9000X. That's right. Let's go ahead and drop it. Oh, I didn't mean that way. All right, let's try again. And here we go. Now, if these guys come a little too close to us, the blades will cut right through them. And if they don't want to get any closer, we can always jab them with our blades. Oh, and that guy just got killed by his own cannon. Hilarious. We're very close to beating this level. Let's go ahead and try for another swing. We, we, maybe we can swing some... Uh... There we go. Piece of wood just flying at the uh, enemy. We just break our weapon apart and see if any of the flying debris... And th this is where the camera gets a little crazy now. Um, but you can see with the press of uh, spacebar, it resets you no problem. And there's also the reset camera button as well. Okay, so with that, uh, I think we're going to have to try a new weapon. Let's go ahead and just go back to the Borka Bolt. It's got a little bit more mobility. Let's go ahead and just immediately swing at these guys. No problem. Our uh, holder fell off, but that doesn't that's not the end of the world. Cannons are trying to do some real damage against us. Let's back over this one. Screw you, jerk. And let's get right into these archers. This this thing's going to start falling apart. Archers are pretty much like uh pretty much like um dumping water on sugar or something. It'll just dissolve immediately as soon as it makes contact. So just keep in mind with that. Meanwhile, they're trying to attack elsewhere on the on the oh there we go we killed the guy with the tire all right let's give that another shot again each time you do this completely different result if uh, you know there's a lot of rng to the game we're taking some direct hits here from that other cannon let's see if we can get up there and j get that jerk oh we can't and i fell apart again all right let's try something else let's try something maybe that we haven't tried in a while let's try the bork cannon should we try that? I think that would be a good test. Let's go ahead and try the Bork Cannon. We get three shots with this, so luckily... Um, I'm trying to load this machine here. Ah, there we are. Good. Alright, so a little bit of... Uh, those cannonballs, can they roll through like that? Okay, we got some cannonballs to roll through to those guys there. We don't have any sp uh, sp <clears throat> spikes on the front. Those balls there are actually screwing us up. Oh, they're ripping the wheels off and everything. So it's definitely not easy to get through this area, for sure. And uh, our vehicle starts to fall apart immediately. Well, I guess it's time for uh, the old... Uh, we could either do the Bork Tyson or the Bork Mobile. They're pretty much the same weapon uh, in terms of just ramming into the enemy and causing a lot of trouble. Ooh, look at that. The cannons are hitting us, knocked a wheel off there, but we're taking a lot of damage. It's still going strong. That extra armor, a real big payoff. Trying to go for a nice tight turn around the corner here trying to get these guys at a high enough speed let's try that again we'll go right for one of the cannons first as they seem to be the bigger problem wow he blew off my entire right side all right let's try that again again trial and error every time is different losing a back wheel this time both back wheels are down not enough speed to actually take these guys down but the cannon doing damage on its own troops its own allies damage there back of the Borkmobile taking some damage. Not easy to turn with just two now down to one tire. Oh, no. All right, let's try that Bork Tyson then. Let's go for that. All right, here we go. It's going to be very difficult to steer this weapon. Oh, yeah. No kidding. All right, let's try again. Oh, yeah. Okay, so cannons cannot get hit by that they do just way too much damage though the cannons have to be destroyed in order to be successful uh let's see let's try our air bork we did that bork lift no good bork nato is something that's just too experimental at this point it's just too beta it's too beta alpha all right look at that i think our there's like rope flying around that's actually killing people we get very close to getting this accomplished but let's try again with the Borka Bolt. I think pretty much this is going to be the only thing that's going to make it through. We can destroy that front line of troops and just cut right through that immediately. Uh, we can then try to back over this cannon. Look at the reload on that. Damn, that thing is fast reload. Sleight of hand on this cannon. Archer is destroying their own cannon there. And we can just plow right into them. They're very uh, vulnerable. Got that guy up against the rocks. You know what? Let's go for the tents. Those are going to be worth more points. Oh, I can't really steer into them, though. We can only kind of make these guys do the, uh... We can only make them do, like, the, uh... Jimmy Crack Corn Dance or something. Or, no, I'm not thinking... I meant the other song. What the hell's that song? Oh, I forgot. Anyway, that's our victory song right there. On to our next level already. Next zone. Here we go. All right. So, we've got a, uh... 
we've got something very interesting here. You can see a little bit of wind blowing in front of us, which means that if we try to use our air bork, we'll just uh, be blown off to the side. Of course, we're set up quite straight on. We can just fly right into this thing. Oh, not necessarily. See, we get we get tipped off to the side there. Now, hitting it with the Bork Buster 9000 or the uh, anything else is going to be just way too easy. So let's try to let's try let's just try to get in there and uh, take this thing on. I'm going to try to position myself a little bit so the uh, that booty turns a little bit to the left, so that way I can. Uh, we're killing some sheep here, though we're not wanting to. I want to be able to turn into the wind. Okay, sheep, thank you. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. Nope. Again, interesting trial and error. Oop, I didn't have the... Uh, okay, that was my bad. I did not turn on the back end there for a second. Ah, we're just going to get blown off to the side. Okay, let's see what else we can do. Um, I don't think anything else could get up there, so the air bork's going to be the best way to get up there. Let's go ahead and get that tail end working. There we go. That's what we wanted right there. Perfect. Alright, let's take off. So all we can, oh shoot, I hit the space bar. All we really have to do is once we've turned ourselves like that, all we have to do is just fly right into it. There you go, perfect. Uh, that, that was even better than before. Okay, next zone. Here we go. All right, we've got the Highland Tower. This is going to be quite the, quite the tower to destroy. We have to destroy 80% of the tower. There's archers in front of us. Again, we could try this or the Bork Buster 9000. Let's go ahead and switch over to the, let's try the Borkable. Let's try to, you know, use a, a weapon of minimal standards. Oh wow, look at that. The Borka Bolt can't even reach up there. That's on such a such a high cliff that we actually do need the Bork Buster 9000X available now. Uh, let's go ahead and toss. Sweet. Look at that. Not even the Bork Buster 9000X had enough oomph to destroy that tower completely. But again, RNG, it's all about how you let go of that uh, of that L button. Of course, you can you can tap L just a, just a little bit, and it'll just kind of do that. Or you can hold L, and it'll do that. Of course, that's what we needed, a full strike, in order to push through all those troops and just leveling that tower completely. Let's move on to the next level. It's good to have you guys here again. Thanks for supporting me and everything throughout all this, and all your likes are greatly appreciated. And I hope you're enjoying this game as well. Please do share with a friend. And thanks for sticking around this long. We've got four pieces of wood that we can transport up onto this little hill here. Now, of course, a catapult's not going to do anything for that. But what we can use is something that I haven't yet shown you, the air bork lift, which is basically a carrier, uh, an air helicopter, well, uh, uh, I, I guess a cargo helicopter? Is that is that accurate? I guess so. Anyway, this can turn both left and right with a tail rudder on it. It also has a rear rudder and additional stabilizers to try to take the weight. It's going to be very difficult to go and get those up there with this, but we can try the bork lift if this is not successful. This is still kind of in its Alpha, Beta, Bravo, Charlie, Alpha, Delta stage, which is totally pre-Alpha. Available now, uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and try. So left Oop, <laughs> look at that little little uh, helicopter blade already fell off before I was able to display this. So if I press left, the blade on the right starts to spin, which means it'll bank left. If I press right, that means the opposite will happen. It'll bank to the right instead. And if I push up, the tail end will rise. And if I push down, the front end will rise. And of course, Q lifts the entire thing together. And with E and R, I can turn the thing all different sorts of ways. Now, of course, this looks a little easier said than done, I think, in terms of getting it over there. So we're going to turn it all the way down to about 28%. That's a good percent. And let's see if we can go ahead and pick up one of these uh, boxes. So it's it's all about the finesse. You kind of want to just tilt your way ever so slightly over there, uh, maybe even use the tail rudder just a little bit. This is why this speed um, function is so powerful in this game. It gives you extra time to react, and uh, we're starting to tilt a little bit, so... Uh, Going to want to try to uh, get as close to that pile of wood as we can, that stack of lumber. And, of course, just the smallest mistake will send you way off course. So it's not as easy as it looks. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try to even out this time and head towards that um, stack there. It would be good if there was some sort of first-person view. Maybe that's something they can work on in the future, maybe a pilot seat or something like that. That would definitely help with controlling vehicles such as these. Uh, luckily not losing any pieces yet, though I think that's about to change in a second if we get any closer. Let's go ahead and try to lift off the ground again. We're very close to this uh, pile of lumber. If we can just get our booty off the ground. 
I'm trying to get that back end to tilt forward so that way we can move towards this pile of lumber. And again, remember, we can adjust the lift in each one of these umbrellas, which means that we could take off more effectively. And in fact, I think we might actually have to do that in order to be a little bit more maneuverable. But let's go ahead and just see if we can take out a tree. Nope. All right, let's try again. Be patient with me now. This is going to have a huge payoff as soon as we get that uh, pile of lumber attached to the grabber at the bottom. In fact, I think, as I did this in a test, it makes the helicopter much easier to maneuver for some strange reason. We did lose a wing there, so we're going to have to try, a, try it again. Let's go for a different target this time. Let's try one of the ones on the left side instead. And you can see that tail rotor in action. Uh, this is a very basic design, I think. But, of course, the more weight you add to things, the harder it is to maneuver. And the designs just become more ugly as the more you add to them anyway. So it's kind of nice just to do it this way. Very difficult to control pitch, control yaw. and uh, But it's damn well worth it once you get it up there. That's why, you know, of course, we could have got up there by now with the bork lift. But doing the air bork lift is so much more satisfying. We're going to try to get as close to that pile of lumber as possible. We actually need to touch it. There's no real no real way around it. We actually need to make contact with those spikes underneath. And interestingly enough, we end up exactly where we started from with the uh, way we control it. And uh, I was trying to move as close to that pile of lumber as possible. I'm going to go ahead and try to move in. It almost looks like the villagers are trying to guide us in, but they're no help especially when we're almost upside down, which we did land upside down. All right, let's turn ourselves. Oh, we did lose uh, a wing there. All right, let's get ourselves aimed towards the target this time, or a target, somewhat in, in a general direction towards them. Oh, wait a minute. This might actually pay off. Perfect. And all we have to do is just... Oh, man, this is going to be much more difficult than I wanted it to be. But again, the payoffs are huge when you take the time to just go through and design something such as this. It's just amazingly satisfying once you get it to work, of course. This will work. It just does take a lot of finesse. And I think we've, we've almost got it. Let's go ahead and uh, set her down there. So she's pulling a little bit too far to the to the right there. So I'm going to try to spin it all the way around. So again, watch on the left and right sides of the craft as we, you know, again attempt to control pitch and yaw and the angle of attack, of course, the back end it's very difficult, by the way, to design this with the weight load in mind. Uh, you do have to design it so that way it controls what... Let's speed up the... Let's actually try with the speed increased. That actually might be where our problem's coming in. Let's go ahead and just try this at normal speed and see what happens. I've actually noticed that a lot where um, I will actually do a lot worse with uh, with slower speeds. That's one thing i got to do. From the start, we need to have the ascend just pick up right away. So as you can see, we can fly right up there, no problem. We can get up there no problem at all. And uh, let's go ahead and try this again. Yeah, that back end, we might have to adjust that a little bit so it's more responsive. Good, you guys are going to see some on-the-fly uh, adjustments here. Flying speed is at 10 currently. Let's go ahead and try 15 and see how much of a difference that makes. No, still not, not enough to compensate without having to go all that way back. Oh, maybe p putting it up to 15 actually was quite efficient in getting it to level out much much more early in the uh, in the initial flight. Okay, well, let's try to get over here then. Oh, it's so difficult, but it's gonna be it's gonna be the world once I get it. And that's what this game might be eventually in the future will be some sort of uh, difficult test and of course the sandbox mode offers a lot of different terrains but anyway if I don't get it this time I'll give up and just go with the regular forklift as you guys can kind of tell that uh, this is you know this is kind of a concept I'm just gonna give it one more try as our engine fell off there I just I at least want to pick up the uh, lumber pile there or at least get oh hell let's just crash into it 
I can't even do that. All right, well, bork lift it is. But you can see the air bork, I, I've gotten it, the air bork lift, I've had it work before. It, it just takes some time, and it's so satisfying to get it up there. Unfortunately, we're going to just have to use the uh, bork lift. That's fine. No harm done there, as it only takes one, um, one lumber load up there, and uh, you're good to go. In fact, we could just probably walk up there and hand deliver it if we needed to. We can just kind of jump up there. And, uh, but just getting in the zone like that is perfect. And I'm in the zone, too. I'm enjoying this game quite immensely. So I highly recommend it here. Solomon's Flock. All we have to do is just kill 80% of all the sheep here is exactly what the Bork Tyson was designed for. We'll just hit spacebar, put the hands behind the head, and just watch as death comes to us. You can see some of the sheep over there uh, just kind of self-suiciding over there in the, in the background. I hope a lot of you like lamb chops. We will be having quite a bit of them tonight. And uh, I haven't shown yet fire weapons. You can actually use fire as well. Uh, look, look at that now, how unstable we are. It's pretty good. Just by hitting the fence, by the way, we took that damage. But yes, you can use fire. The fire does allow you to... It's toggle-based, so you can control it. It gives you a 10 seconds worth of fuel, so you can use it for 2 seconds, and then 1 second, then another 2 seconds, whatever you need. And uh, we should be able to kill 80% of these sheep, no problem. Uh, let's actually use the bork lift, as it can jump up there. Uh, in order to get up to some of those fields that are up there. See, the Bork lifts will kill it too. Not everything has to be uh, for, designed for good. We'll just plow right into this uh, into this uh, sheep field here, I guess is what you call them, a sheep pen. And we'll just back up over all these sheep. They're just wanting to die. I mean, just they, they just run under the tires. They're the dumbest things ever. That's kind of satisfying. To, I wonder if we can stab them. I'd like to pick one up. That would be cool. All right, let's get up to the top now and finish some of these guys off. It'll be a lot quicker. All right, so let's get up there. A little hop and a skip and a hop and a hop and a skip. There you go. See, it works. Well, poorly, but it works. We kind of shook the uh, top end of the bork lift off. Well, more than just the top end. Damn. Bork mobile would do quite well here as well. It's, I like how there's not an increasing level of difficulty, just an increasing level of creativity. Not Again, it's not just a small tower, then a tower and a wall, and then a massive castle. It's, uh, hey, you're surrounded by troops, and the next uh, instant it's, uh, hey, help these guys uh, get this wood up top the hill. I mean, it's just it's weird. It's interesting. Look at that sheep. Look at them dance with us. Come dance with me, sheep. Come dance. Sheepy, sheepy. All right, let's get some of these other sheep down here. Just driving on, driving on. Oh, you know what? Oh, yeah, I was going to say we could destroy the windmill, but I don't think that counts towards the sheep killing. Getting a lot of these sheep, though. Damn. There's quite a few of them. This thing can turn quite nicely. Look at that. That's some very... That's zero turning radius right there. Damn. Watch out, Nissan Altima. Okay, so let's uh, let's see if we can get up there again. I think we'll uh, kill these two last sheep. Sorry about this. Okay, and we'll uh, back that ass up. Oh, there's another one over here. Hello. I'm after you. You better run. You better run. Uh oh Okay. Rawr. Oh, come on, sheep. I, I didn't even kill that sheep over there. That one just killed itself by jumping down the ledge. Oh, come on now. There we go. Yeah. All sense of security. All right, let's get up there. So all we need is a little bit of a run. And we should be able to get up there, no problem. Damn, tree is in the way, though. That's a little bit of a problem. I may have spoke too soon on that. Borklift's only flaw is that it's, uh, well... It's <laughs> wow, it's really, it's good to twerking, isn't it? The twerk lift. Oh, that zero turning radius is awesome. This is the greatest weapon for when you need to navigate strange terrain like this. Oop, I'm turning right instead of left. I, the, by the way, the controls are reversed on this weapon, so it's not as easy to uh, to do. But yeah, you can see we got up here, no problem. We do want to keep climbing up the mountain, though. There we are. All right, so we didn't get up to the top sheep pen, but there you go. That's the end of that level. Let's move on to the next one. Next zone... Ah, Marksman's Pass. Now, this is an interesting level. This really shows off a little bit more of their creativity, of course. We're going to be under fire now as we have to make our way up this ramp. And, of course, the more we get hit, the more our, sh our, our vehicles fall apart. 
and of course there's things like that so all right now exactly what the bork mobile was designed for let's get to it this is exactly what its purpose is in life is just to deflect all the enemy shots and keep moving quickly we'll take minimal hits if any we may lose a wheel or two there goes one uh, it could take it. Yeah, of course we went over the edge So it will take a, a an attempt or two to try to get up there We do need to meet uh, three checkpoints in order to accomplish this look at that we're screwing up the marksman uh, We even screwed ourselves up. So I'll do it right this time um, So anyway, I'm gonna try to get a little bit more focused here. Oops. Oops. I did it again All right, let's get right up this hill now. No more excuses. Let's do it. No excuses unacceptable There we go. So we've got up. Oh, uh oh, wait a minute. We lost a wheel Batmobile lost it. Borkmobile lost all of its wheels except for one. Oh crap. No. Okay, let's try to get up that hill. We could probably zoom it now. Up, up. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's try again. Again, this game, great trial and error. For those of you who may be frustrated or bored with that, this might not be the game for you. But if you really do like trying things time and time again, for instance, I really relate this game to bridge builders. And of course, this makes me just want to play games like Medieval Engineers more and more as it's just all about creativity and about solving problems and doing more with less and uh, yeah so we keep getting stuck and they're really good at taking out our wheels so we're gonna ooh, even I'm good at taking out my own wheels I love that spacebar feature it is so nice to just be able to reset that easily I'm doing a bad thing by actually driving over the ledge here so again uh, of course you know when I'm not recording that's when I do it the first time no problem and then of course when I record uh, I'm like uh, goddamn Matthew Broderick going over a cliff Look it up. He killed somebody. All right, so let's go ahead and get up the ramp. Ah, oh, damn. Oh, come on now. Oh, there's actually a bomb under the... Uh, there, let's actually go down here for a second. Yep, you can see there's bombs underneath the uh, underneath the bridge, Marksman's Pass. If anything, we can use the uh, Bork Chopper or whatever to get up there. Will be a lot more difficult, but I'm, I'm kind of bored of this level already. Let's go. Nice thing is, is if you can't beat a level, you can return to the menu and uh, it will allow you to skip to the next one just by uh, by skipping through it. Though this seems like to be the most easiest level of the freaking game. In fact, I designed this thing specifically for this uh, this level. So, and by the way, look at look at how the rear end is a little bit thinner than the front end. That helps with the turning quite immensely as well. So, for those of you who are designing vehicles that are like equal in front and back. Consider smaller designs as well. Man, it's like the same. It's like it's like Groundhog's Day here. We keep getting trapped at that same spot. Again, frustration can set in on these levels like this. But again, you're always encouraged to try different designs. So with the Bork lift not working out so well, or with the uh, Bork mobile not working out so well, let's try the Bork lift. Ironically enough, even though I designed this we uh, this vehicle for this, the Bork lift is something that's just going to work the first time, no problem. Now just watch this. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got stuck, so. All right, I went the wrong way, too. You know what? This turning radius on the Bork lift, that's something I uh, misunderestimated, too. Though it's much wider. Damn it. <laughs> All right, I think we have to go back to the, the Bork mobile. We'll give it one more shot. Thanks for staying with me. This is, this is fun. This is uh, my idea of fun, too, by the way. Constant problem-solving. Not only in your design, but your implementation of your uh, ability to attack. In this case, we're just trying to drive up a road. And I feel like st stopping even in the slightest is just death in this case. We have two sets of, uh, two sets of m marksmen firing at us. And they will not run out of bows either. A minimal amount of hits on the wheels. I was just kind of seeing there. Just to see how much damage they could take. A uh, real minimal amount of damage on those wheels, and uh, you're done. Ah, uh, damn it. Losing tires like that so quickly, that's what's throwing me off. They're really good at hitting those tires. This thing needs to be faster, though we can't actually, um... Can't actually make it any faster. I'm really bad at driving. My apologies. Stay with me now. Stay with me. Come on, baby. Get up there. And we're gonna lose a wheel. Yep. Mandatory that we lose a wheel or two up there. So I think when we come around that corner, those marksmen are really good at sniping our tires. So their next shot, they're going to take off a tire. Oh, man. Here we go. Yep. So we're losing 
We're getting a little too close there. I really need to watch it on that edge. This time, it's going to be perfect. We're going to do it. We got it. We got it. Because I said so. Nope. That's wrong. Okay. Oh, okay. Maybe this time. Got to do it. 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 All right. That's one checkpoint. And three wheels just immediately taken off. Damn. Ah, to hell with this. We'll use the damn uh, Borkapult then to get half, rid of half those a-holes. Just seeing how far we can actually shoot this thing. Alright, so that's half the guys gone. So that's one of our big problems out of the way. Look at the range on these uh, archmen, though. These archers just have an incredible range. And we're trying to turn. Bork, Bork a pult just falling apart on us. Oh, man. Wow. Who, who, would, who would have thought that this would have been the uh, most difficult level? If we use the air bork, we can't just fly to one zone. We actually have to fly to uh, three of them. So that's why I've continued to use this. Uh, let's go ahead and give this another try. I know we can do it with this. We just gotta believe. I gave up on the uh, other one, and I don't want to give up here. We could put armor pieces over the tires. Maybe that would be a good idea. We can go ahead and adjust that design now, making it a little bit more heavy, but a little more durable as well. So let's go ahead and there. There was our quick add-on to that. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Eh, it maneuvers a lot less than it did before, but this might be just exactly what we need to get up there. Oh, yes. Adapt, everyone. Don't be stubborn like I was. Oh, okay. Yes, be stubborn. Screw screw change. I lost two wheels because of it. All right. We're going to crawl our ass up there. Come on, get up there. Dig in, damn it. Dig in. It's going to take a whole lot of flooring. There we go. Come on. Come on. Yes. 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 All right, there you go. Success, finally. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so there you go. And by the way, you can hit space and go back and try it again, or you can just go to the next zone. There's always the ability to replay. And finally, the last level. We're going to go ahead and finish it off with the Borknado, which is something I designed that actually didn't work. I was trying to experiment with kind of throwing a bomb like a baseball bat or a, a baseball pitcher while uh, this is supposed to spin. It worked a lot better in my earlier designs, but you can see it just kind of flies off and such. My idea was to use that spinning block there to really wind up, and and this uh, this frame here is more for balance, not to keep these guys out. But one interesting thing you can do is if you put these uh, spinning blocks on top of each other, and let's go ahead and get rid of some of these supports, you can actually make it spin faster and faster all the way up to the top. So you can see there that you know they're actually spinning faster on the top than they are at the bottom, and so you can go go ahead and open up for Metallica if you wanted to and do some really cool uh, special effects or something like that, you know. Something like that. Yeah! Metallica. Something like that. Whatever. Who cares? Anyway, so that design didn't work, but actually I'm killing more people with that than most of my designs that are actually designed to kill people. Isn't that ironic? So with that said, the Borkbuster 9000X is designed exactly for this castle, and goodbye, castle. I mean, goodbye me. Goodbye, ca And goodbye. Good. Goodbye, castle. See, I'll, I'll just edit that out. That's not a problem. So, anyway, all these guys here, they're going to die. I'm getting stabbed. One thing you want to do, actually, is light these guys on front, in the front on fire. And uh, these guys will run around and light some of the village on fire, too. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. Perfect. So, there goes the castle. There goes the uh, the town. There goes everything. So, that's it. That's the end of everything, so thanks for joining me, you guys, for Besiege version 00000001. So, anyway, that's it for now. Until next time, keep your passwords and pimp hands strong. I will see you guys. Bye.